Good evening, everyone. Today we have another evening live stream. This is a live video review. So for those who didn't watch the previous video review, I would like to repeat that I have um, small illness, let's say, a sore throat. So that's why I might lose voice sometimes and I would like to apologize in advance. But today we are going to check fresh release from Zvezda. I brought it today from Moscow, so we have a commercial sample. This kit is already sold in all sh good shops. You can buy it straight away. But this is a completely fresh plastic in 170 second scale, which copies Soviet dive bomber Petlikov P2. So as you remember, previous release was molded in big 148 scale, and it was quite nice surprise from Russian company. Thank you for the first like. And it was only a question of the time, let's say, to see uh, when this company will prepare the small scale release of the same aircraft. So here we are, we have it freely available. I can guess that we will see more versions in the close future, but this is the first release and you can see the nice box art on the front side. Uh, box size is obviously smaller, here you can see comparison with my hand. Then on this side we have some information about other kits in the same scale from the same brand. Then here we have some information about the kit. It's written in Russian and English. Also there are 199 parts inside and length of the model will be equal to 17.4 centimeters. So 70 second scale, no surprise, it's a small model. And then here we have some safety advices, also uh, information about the decals and paints chart which is given in Zvezda and Tamiya numbers. This is a sealed box as you can see here we have the sticker so I'm going to use the sharp knife in order to cut through it and check what is hidden inside. In the meantime let me remind you that we are gathering money for the new photo and video equipment so you can help us by pressing the special donate button on our website. It is quite big, it is difficult to miss. <coughs> Sorry. And it is done via PayPal. So you will be able to help us get the new photo and video equipment or maybe get some medicals for my throat. Who knows? So here is what we have inside. Thank you for the second like. This is a quite rough cardboard, but it does what it should. I mean, it protects all the parts. Here you can see what we have inside. And this box came with me in the luggage. So as you can see, everything stayed intact. We all know how the luggage is treated by airlines. So that's really surprising that box survived such hard shipment. Okay, so first on the top of the box, thank you for the third like. On the top of the box we had this Ziploc bag, it is um, dedicated to decals, sheet and also for clear ports. So here you can see clear ports and also give me a second to remove decals sheet in order to see what we have on it. So just give me a sec. Okay, so first we start with this clear sprue, let's zoom in. That's the maximum zoom we can get out of this camera. But you can see all the ports, molding quality looks quite nice. But traditionally for Zvezda we do not have any masks included, so you have to be careful while cutting all the stickers. Of course, there will be aftermarket sets available, I think Edward already works on it. So if you are not in a hurry, if you don't need to build it straight away, you can wait a bit and get the aftermarket mask set, aftermarket P set for super detailing your model. And of course it will simplify the assembly process of this kit. Next we have the decals sheet. This one, oh, all the symbols are fit on one decals sheet. We have here quite nice printing quality. I do not see any decals for the cockpit. No, here we have decals for the instrument panel, but no seat belts. So if you would like to have the more detailed cockpit, I would recommend to get some aftermarket P set from Edward because it will make it easier to have a really nice result. <coughs> Sorry. Without any extra, I would say, work because you just use the P parts, install them into the cockpit and you are good to go. Here we have first plastic bag with 
big gray plastic spruce. It is sealed plastic bag. So that's why we will need scissors in order to cut through it. So just give me a second. In the meantime, I would like to say that Zvezda already prepared several new kits. As far as I remember, it will be Kamas truck and also the freight version of the Boeing, as far as I remember. And those are quite nice kits. I hope you will check them a bit later, so stay tuned. And thank you for the fourth like, by the way. Hi, Nikki. Thank you for watching today. Thank you for joining. So here in this plastic bag, we have two gray plastic sprues. And what do we have here? First plastic sprue is dedicated to top wing house, I guess. Also, we have separate ailerons here, separate frontal sections. Um, all those minor parts are dedicated to the landing gear system. And these are really thin parts. I can zoom in even more so that you can understand uh, what I'm talking about. Here is comparison with my fingertip. <coughs> Excuse me once again. So, um, the level of molding quality is really impressive. I mean, it is not comparable to what we saw in Zvezda kids before because they really stepped up their game. And now we get properly detailed and nicely molded parts out of the box. And you won't have to deal with anything. I mean, do you see any flesh on these parts? I don't. And I think that's really cool because that's a noticeable improvement. And here you can see all those parts from another side. Again, really impressive level of quality. And I hope it will be easy to assemble. Hi, Wolfpack. And next we have another um, gray plastic sprue. Why I'm a bit confused because I was like checking what are those wing halves? I guess those are bottom wing halves because we have the separate engine nozzles. Also here we have the landing gear wheels. They look surprisingly nice. Here you can see them closer. So we have here quite nice tire <coughs> picture. Excuse me for my coughing. Thank you for the fifth like. So quite nice tire. Uh, copying. Of course, we do not have any detailing on the tire walls. If you would like to have this level of detailing, you will have to go for resin parts. But I think that's not necessary in this scale, in this size. Also note these thin pipings here. And of course, parts of the engine nozzles and some cockpit parts. External detailing looks really nice because we have here recessed panel lines and riveting. And if we flip over these parts, you can see that we have guiding pins on wing parts and also on those engine nozzles parts as well. So it will be easy to align them together and to get the proper fitment out of the box. That's really cool because it might be even interesting for those who do not have the proper experience with some complex kits, let's say. Next we have another grey plastic spruce set in the separate plastic bag. Again, we use scissors in order to cut through. So just give me a second. Okay. So what do we have here? Obviously we have the fuselage halves here, but we will take a look at them a bit later. First, we, I would like to show you this. So here we have engine parts and parts for the engine nozzles. And again, molding quality looks really good, but note that attachment points on the propeller blades are, I mean, you have to be careful with these things. Again, we have here the separate exhaust stacks. So it means if you plan to get some aftermarket resin, it will be easy to install it because we have separate exhaust stacks. Also here we have the uh, two halves for the frontal section of the engine nozzles. And if we flip it over here, we have some parts for the engine radiators, which I can guess they will be replaced by P in the, for example, Edward aftermarket sets. Here inside we have guiding pins, so it will be easier to combine those two halves together and get the right alignment between them. Okay. Next we have final gray plastic sprue. So I guess in total we have four gray plastic sprues in this kit. And we can zoom out a bit. 
So here we have long fuselage halves. Obviously they are molded without tail segment because tail segment will be assembled separately. As you remember ailerons were molded separately, here they are. Also we have pilot figurines, that's really surprising. Now some of the cockpit parts here, here you can see two tail fins together with rudders. Well, I mean it is understandable why they are molded separately. And now we can zoom in. So, pilot figurines. That's really cool that we have them out of the box. That's the first thing. The second thing is that they're really nicely detailed. So, as you can see, they should be glued out of several pieces. And for 170 second scale, it's really nice detailed. I can bring it closer, so I hope camera will be able to focus. And now you should be able to see them a bit closer than what we saw before. So, here they are. And that would be strange not to use such nice bonus out of the box. So that's really cool that Zvezda decided to include them into the package, into the standard out of the box plastic package. As for the fuselage halves, we have recess panel lines. What I'm not that cool with is that we have the um, nose area which is molded together with fuselage halves, even though we could have um, this part we could have had it as a one piece element which would simplify the assembly process. I am not sure why it was decided like this. I hope that it was done for ease of assembly, who knows, but I mean, if you have some ideas, write it in the comments. And thank you, thank you for the six like, by the way. If you flip it over again, we have some internal detailing. I can zoom in so that you can see it closer. Here it is. And of course we have guiding pins, so it will be easy to align these large halves together. But again, I'm not sure, still not sure why we have the nose section pre-molded. That's a 2019 and we still get the nose section molded together with fuselage halves. That's not my thing, I would say. Then here we have a um, small note with some safety devices. That's nice and serious. Um, marking guides, they are printed on the separate sheet of paper, as you can see they are printed in color. Here we have first marking option, this one comes from the 34th Guards Bomber Aviation Regiment, Leningrad Front, December 1944. Also here we have aircraft with red arrow, and as you can see that's a Polish aircraft, so I guess it comes from um, Polish Air Force and pilot is commander of the third bomber regiment it's end of 1945 then if we flip it over here we have one two three more marking options so third marking option is dedicated to the aircraft from the 40th bomber aviation regiment of the black sea fleet of the soviet navy 1944 here we have aircraft from the 40th Air Transport Directorate of the Black Sea Fleet of the Soviet uh, Union, August 1944. And here is another one which comes from what it is. It's a 12th Guards Dive Bomber Aviation Regiment of the Baltic Fleet of the USSR Navy, Vasily Rakov, 1945. So here you can see it. And in my opinion, obviously, the most noticeable marking is this one. But of course, the final decision will be up to you. And I think that's really cool that we get five markings out of the box. Some bigger kits do not feature such choice out of the box as a standard bonus, let's say. Next, we have the assembly manual. This one is printed in black and white uh, as a black and white brochure. We have here a short history note in Russian and English. Also, you can use this or build this aircraft with aircraft stand, but you should buy it separately, so keep it in mind. Um, Zvezda sells it as a separate kit, so you can get it easily together with this kit. Then when we flip over this page, we have here a ports map. And also science legend, so that you understand what do science mean. And assembly process starts with wing parts. So as you can see, you will have to drill some holes. As you can see, it's written perforated, but obviously you will use the drill bits. Then we continue with separate ailerons and front wing slats here. That's really cool that we have the front wing edge, which is molded as a... I mean, at least one section which is molded as a one-piece part, because... 
at least there you won't have to deal with any gaps and seams between those two halves. Then we continue with wending gear wheels and wending gear system. Here we use the wending gear parts for the main legs. And here you can see the assembly process. Then we assemble the engine gondolas here. Thank you for the seventh like. That's really cool. I'm glad that you are watching this. Then here we continue with installation of this engine nozzles on the wing ports. Note that here we have the separate, um, I would say, light covers which are molded out of the clear plastic, obviously, so you have to mask them as well, if you're ready for this. And do not forget about it, because I saw some models with covered, um, where paint covered those areas. That wasn't cool at all. Then here we have choice between assembling the aircraft with retracted landing gear or folded um, in landing gear. It will be up to you which one you choose. Both versions look nice, so, I mean, also, it depends if you have the aircraft stand for this aircraft. Then here we continue with installation of this frontal engine um, cooling section on the wings. Here we work on the fuselage. And then we continue with cockpit area. And as you can see, still in one seventy second scale, we will have to use a lot of parts in order to build the cockpit of this aircraft. And that's really surprising in my opinion, because you get such detailing out of the box. So be ready for this, because those parts are not huge, so you have to use tweezers, you have to use some additional tools in order to hold those parts and combine them together somehow, so it will be quite a tricky process in my opinion. Also here we have the pilot assembly, so for you it is, I would say, more of an option, so if you would like to have pilots in the cockpit, just assemble, place it, and it will be a quite a nice result in my opinion, because we are all used to see models without any figurines inside, especially in the small scale. Then here we continue with fuselage half, bomb bay, and as you can see you can assemble with bombs inside. Then we continue with another figurine placement in the rear section, of course that's a gunner. Then here we install the tail surfaces and do not forget about the right alignment of the tail surfaces because this aircraft did not have the straight angle of the tail wings. And I saw some models which again which had the straight angle to the fuselage of the tail wings and that's not the right feature to replicate. So always check your references and build the right model if you would like to achieve the more or less realistic result, let's say. Here we continue with uh, gunner figurine assembly, uh, machine gun. Obviously this one will be replaced with aftermarket. I think aftermarket producers will release it for sure out of resin. Then here we continue with cutting off some sections. We install various doors and also hatches. <coughs> Excuse me. And note that you can assemble uh, two different versions. Of course, you don't have to open the um, crew door here on the bottom of the fuselage. You can close it even with retracted landing gear, so it's not necessary. Then here we continue with assembly of the um, aircraft stand, but again I remind that it is not included into this kit. And then here we have the propeller assembly, then we install the propellers inside the aircraft. Of course they are not glued, so you can rotate them if you would like to. Of course canopy is molded as a one piece part because it wasn't openable, but again I remind that masks are not included, so you have to cut them with your own hands. And here we have this stenciling guide um, so that you know where to place all the stencil writings on the aircraft. And once again, it's really cool that we have the stencils out of the box, especially in 170 second scale, because in 170 second scale, that's not such a common feature, I would say, especially the one which you get out of the box. Maybe in some aftermarket decal set, it is a normal, but not for the normal plastic kit for reasonable price. So, in my opinion, this Petlekov P2 looks good. Um, I mean, the molding quality looks impressive, the detailing looks nice. For sure, there will be some aftermarket sets. 
but this is definitely not a kit for um, or, I would say beginner complete beginner who doesn't have the experience so start this kit only if you are confident in your skills and you have several models built behind your back let's say or on your shelf however you like it but do not start this model without anything done before because you will be frustrated obviously and then it will be a bad experience of course i will be happy to hear your opinion about this kit thank you for the eight like by the way that's cool so your opinion here in the comment section below write it there i will be happy to discuss it with you and if you like this video don't forget to press the like button because it helps us greatly to grow and to let's say send out this video review to other viewers so that they know about this nice kit and i will see in the next video review as usual thank you for watching thank you for joining me this evening again sorry for my throat sorry for my voice i hope i will get well soon and i will see in the next video review as usual bye